So why do criminals commit crimes in a specific, identifiable way? What makes one offender seem like they're in control while another one impulsively destroys a crime scene and brutally punishes their victim? Questions like this plague the true crime community and investigators of violent crime. When uncovered, they paint an image of who the offender is and what motivates the predator to commit the crime. Let's talk behavior. Welcome to Profiling Evil. If you're new to our channel, thanks for joining. And if you're one of my university students or a longtime channel member, welcome back. Thanks for your support. And either way, folks, please take a moment, click the like and the subscribe button and ring that bell so that you get all of our videos. Now let's talk profiling. What can we learn by studying the thoughts, feelings, and emotions of predators and their victims? Profiling, or criminal investigative analysis, involves a systematic look at the behavior of criminals and their personality. As the elements of a crime are analyzed against the behaviors and characteristics, the often large list of probable offenders gets narrowed down to a smaller list of more likely perpetrators. This analytic process can speed identification and help investigators form interview and interrogation questions that are much more productive and valuable. When we examine behaviors, we explore an individual's thoughts, what, what they're feeling and, and how they're responding, their emotions. We dig deep into a person's reasoning power and we begin to unveil the things that they idealize or fantasize about. It gives us a sense of how the individual might respond to stimuli through the senses. You know, things like our touch, sight, smell, what we hear and taste. To do this, we need to consider the differing forms of behavior found in criminal cases. This microscopic examination can help investigators and the true crime community to systematically explore the behavior they're seeing. It won't be an exploration of normal, legitimate behaviors, but rather we're going to look at deviant and criminal behaviors instead. And while these might be somewhat distressing to consider, deviant behaviors are not necessarily criminal behaviors. So let's look at it a little deeper. Deviant behavior is conduct that violates societal norms, normal understanding, or public expectation. Let's use this terminology and framework as we continue our discussion. Social rules are all inherent in all systems, whether they be our friendships, employment relationships, or interaction in the community. People can do things that are deviant, but not necessarily criminal. For instance, I remember a case where a government employee had been seen in the men's bathroom wearing diapers. They weren't ad adult diapers for incontinence. This man was wearing cloth diapers with large diaper pins, like the old cloth diapers toddlers wore before disposable di diapers came onto the market. Now, it came to my attention because it was deviant behavior, and I was in charge of this group of people. The man had a fetish for toddler-aged children's clothing. Wearing the diaper and even having a fetish like this wasn't criminal in nature, but it was certainly deviant outside the norms of public expectation and disturbing to others in the office. I'm going to talk about this more in the minute. An act like this can be deviant, but not criminal. Now, other examples of deviant behavior might be excessive drinking, eating disorders, or self-harming. Even fantasizing about behavior that's criminal in nature isn't criminal unless it's acted out. These deviations from the norm are characterized as abnormal, aberrant, or atypical. On the other hand, let's talk about criminal behavior. It's much blacker and whiter. Criminal behavior is any overt act that violates the law. It's as simple as that. Criminal behavior is always displayed through verbal, 
nonverbal or sexual action, something that we'll explore in another segment at the Profiling Evil Academy. Now, let's go back to my example of the government employee with the fetish for wearing diapers. On one occasion, it was discovered that the employee was using a government-owned computer to access child pornography while at work. This was clearly criminal in nature and led to his arrest, termination, and his introduction into the criminal justice system as a defendant this time. As soon as the individual progressed from deviant acts of inappropriate fantasy to acting out, he violated the law and became a criminal. There are many explanations about why people would commit crime. Some experts suggest there are social and economic factors that lead to crime. Uh, For instance, poverty is often cited as one of those reasons. Hunger may be another. The commission of a crime may be the pursuit of a legitimate kind of need, such as the need for money to pay bills. The criminal aspect comes into play when the person engages these illegitimate or illegal methods to satisfy what otherwise would be a legitimate need. For instance, pulling a gun and robbing someone of their money so that the offender can satisfy their own personal debts is criminal. (laughs) Criminal behavior can be influenced by several other factors, ranging from biological to substance abuse. In some cases, criminal behavior is simply the product of antisocial personalities, those people who prey on others, rather than having the patience to work through societal norms. Some criminologists believe that biology influences criminal behavior. Now, this isn't to say that they believe criminals are just born to be bad. Experts suggest there may be differences in the criminal's ability to decipher right and wrong. Uh, This is where I find myself examining how they respond after they've committed the crime. Do they hide the crime because they understand what society demands, or do they admit it, believing it was justified? Well, I hope this segment helps you better understand deviant and criminal behavior. It should help you better understand how overall it will integrate with other principles that we'll discuss here in the Profiling Evil Academy. If you like the video, folks, hit the like and subscribe button, please. Ring the bell and make sure you get all of our videos. And remember, Profiling Evil can be found on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And if you like podcasts, you can get us on your favorite podcast platform. And don't forget to check us out on the World Wide Web at ProfilingEvil.com. Hey, thanks for supporting us, and we'll see you soon at the next crime scene.